Critical thinking or critical analysis is one of the fundamental abilities that we want you to develop by the time you finish your degree. You might find that the teaching in first and second year of your degree is biased towards giving you the facts and the knowledge that you'll need to become a competent professional in whatever field you're studying in MVLS. And as the years go by and you move into the higher years, you'll be then expected to be able to apply that knowledge to new scenarios, whether that means designing your own experiments or going up against a patient that you've never seen before and deciding what treatment is best for that person or that animal, depending on your degree, given the unique scenario in front of you. So critical analysis and critical thinking mean three things to me. They mean deciding what to do, given the new scenario put in front of you that you haven't seen before. Deciding what to believe, given the evidence that's presented, perhaps in a scientific paper. And deciding whether or not to believe the source of that information itself, given a few simple rules. And I'm going to talk about those briefly now. The practical abilities that you've learned in things like labs and clinical scenarios here at the university have been taught to you usually in controlled situations where we know what technique you've got to apply but when you go off there's no guarantee that you'll ever need to apply that, that skill in exactly the same situation again. So if you're in a lab, ask your demonstrator if you're preparing a buffer for example, why is that buffer the best one for the biological reaction that you're carrying out in the lab that day? so that you know whether or not that buffer is the best one when you go off to do further study if you're going to become a scientist. If you're a clinician and you've been taught a practical skill for use on a patient, what happens if a patient comes in who's physically not able to go through that same examination? Is there something that you can do to tweak it slightly or do you perhaps need to use an entirely different investigation altogether? Think about these things while you're going through the standard version so that you'll know yourself how to modify it if you have to again in the future. If you're looking at a piece of evidence, criticality means deciding whether or not you would have carried out that experiment to get that evidence or done that investigation in the same way yourself. So easy ways to look for material to critically analyse are the materials and methods section or the introduction and conclusion taken together. So when you're looking at the materials and methods or the procedure that was carried out, look for logical flaws in what's been done or the opposite, look for reasons why that technique was the best for that scenario. So if you were looking for an investigation between smoking and the incidence of lung cancer, would an experiment on 200 women from the west of Scotland make a representative sample? 200 is probably not enough to notice a connection like that. And women uh, from the west of Scotland also have many other things in common. They are women and they have the same geographical location, so they're exposed to a variety of factors that are also all the same. So proving a connection like that on a sample like that is not possible, and so the design would be inappropriate for the question being asked. Looking at the introduction and the conclusion means looking at what question was being investigated or what treatment was being given to someone with a condition, and then looking for a conclusion that relates to that. So if you find that the authors proved that a treatment gave benefits in ways X, Y and Z, but they were investigating in the first place how they affected A, B and C, you have to ask yourself why they failed at their initial question. They've written it up as a success in another way, but does that mean that they're inflating the success of the treatment that they decided to give? Not all sources are created equal. You'll be familiar with the dangers of using open source information sources. And while medical and biological articles on things like Wikipedia are not prime targets for an average bored teenager to go and vandalise, you will find that if you examine properly the biomedical content on there, you're likely to come across uh, errors, omissions, or just plain out of date pieces of information. And if you're using that on which to base your experimental protocols or your treatments, then you're potentially putting your results or your patients in danger. Be very, very careful if you're using websites that look scientific but perhaps have other reasons for existing. So prime examples are things like patient support groups. Evidence presented there might be useful and from peer-reviewed sources, but it's going to have a bias towards helping people. And so articles that provide evidence to the contrary are less likely to appear on sources like that. Also, articles from websites that have a main purpose of selling you something classic example is supplements, 
are always going to be di uh, directed towards extracting money from someone. So pay attention to the URL, have a look at the main page of a website if you've found it by Google and it's taking you straight to an article on the back of the website somewhere in the depths, and evaluate whether or not you think it's trustworthy. A really naff sounding but actually really, really useful technique to use is to apply what we call the CRAP system to evaluate whether an author is reliable, whether that's a person or an organisation. And you can see what the CRAP system is all about by following some of these links here. If you want any more information on what critical analysis means and doesn't mean, check out the website for the schedule of classes that I run on this. And if you have any questions that I can answer by email, drop me a line, remember there's a dot two in the middle of my email address.